Hello everyone, it's me again Tabo and this is another lesson on 3JS so I'm going to continue where I left off. Today I'm going to show you how to use post-processing effects. Okay, so right here I've got a naked scene. So this is just a normal rendered cylinder. So now I'm just going to switch on some of the effects just to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to start with the bloom effect. So this is what our scene looks like bloom effect next is the dot effect so this is what the dot effect looks like next you've got sobble so this is what the sobble effect looks like and you can also add some color to it so with colorify then you've got that so these are the effects that we're gonna be uh, going through just to show you how you set that up in the next lesson then I will show you how to make your object selectable because for you to draw that line on the outside to highlight the object that is selected, you will be using post-processing effect. So this is just to prepare you for that, to know how all of that is set up. Uh, this is just a basic uh, template that I have that I'm gonna start working on. So I'm gonna run the server. Okay, there we go. So what are we gonna need for this lesson? Uh, well, already I've got the basic setup, cameras, everything that you should be by now familiar with an orbit control and animation setup. Okay, so now all we need is just to import all the relevant modules so that we can start set, setting this up. So first of all, I'm gonna import an effect composer and then shader pass, a render pass, film pass, unreal bloom pass. So basically all of these uh, I'm gonna import and from then on I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, so now we're gonna create the composer, okay? We're using the effect composer. And so inside the effect composer, we pass it the renderer, okay? Then we create the render pass. And inside the render pass, we pass it the scene and camera. So similar to what you do with the renderer, like what you do over here, you pass it the scene and the camera. You're gonna do the same for the render pass. Next up, we create the dot effect. So this is how you create the dot effect. You use a shader pass. Okay, so for each and every effect that you wanna use, you pass it as an argument to the shader pass. So we're gonna pass it the dot screen shader. And we're gonna do the same for the Unreal Bloom Pass and for Sobble effect. So Bloom Pass is equals to Unreal, Unreal Bloom Pass. And uh, these are the values that we're gonna pass in. So this is the resolution, this is the strength, this is the radius and threshold. I'm gonna open this over here, just so you can see. So this is what the class looks like, basically. And when you initialize it, this is what you pass it in as arguments, resolution, strength, radius, and threshold. So that's what we've got here. And then luminosity effect, we pass it the luminosity shader. Well, as you notice, um, the bloom pass is, works differently. It doesn't use the shader pass. You just basically use it as it is. Next, we create the Sobel effect. Then we create colorify. Okay, so we're gonna go into the Sobel effects uniforms and then we're gonna give it, we're gonna make some changes to its values. So I'm just gonna do it down here. So I'll say Sobel effect dot uniforms resolution. So to the resolution, I'm gonna pass in these values, okay? So we'll say the window dot inner width and then we'll times that by window dot device pixel ratio. And we're gonna have to do the same thing for that. So similar to the dot effect, this is what we also created for it. These are the values that you're gonna add. So you've got that. So uh, once that is done, then we can start setting everything up. So in order to make this work, then you've got to take your composer, the composer that we created over here. So we'll use the composer to then add the different effects. Okay, so we start first by adding the render pass. So before any effect that you want to use, you first have to add a render pass and then afterwards uh, pass in the effect that you want to use. So in this case, we're going to be using, we'll say um, the Sobel effect. Now for the Sobel effect, you need luminosity effect. Okay, without it, it doesn't work. I will show you later how that is. So let's see, so far that's, as you can see, there we go. So we've got our Sobel effect over here. And one other thing that we can do is we can add a color to it, like I showed you earlier. So in order to do that, then we're gonna have to add this part over here, which is colorify. So in our colorify, we'll just basically Okay, um, I just realized that I did not set up the color for Colorify. That's why um, it will not work. 
So over here, I'm going to set up the color for colorify and this is the color that I want to use. So if I go, so this is our color. It's, it's very subtle. It's very subtle. It's not very strong at all, uh, but you can see um, this is what we've got here. Okay. So next up, I will create then our dot effect. I'll just put it underneath here. So in order for this to be visible, I will just switch these off. Okay. So we've got our dot effect. This is what we have. So this is what the dot effect looks like. So we've got that set up over there. Oh yeah, one other thing. Um, instead of using this over here, I will show you. If I just comment that out, it will not affect anything. Because the one that matches is this one over here. Okay, so if I comment that out, and then I come back here, and I use the plain renderer, None of the effects are going to be there. Okay. So all of them work because of this compose over here. So when we come to our render function, then we're going to use the composer.render in order to render the effects. Otherwise, nothing will be visible. So that's how all of that is working. Let me just make that bigger. Now you understand how that works. So next up, I'm going to finish up the rest of the effects. So we've already got our dot effect. So the next one will be our bloom effect. So I will add the bloom effect just underneath here. And I have to comment this out so that it does not interfere with our bloom paths. So when I come here, then, okay, bloom pass is not working. Why is that? Okay, so for our bloom pass to work, I have to add emission. Okay, so what I can do here is I'm going to make the color of our material just plain let's make it plain white and then I'll say emissive then I'll just make emissive blue Oops. oh sorry <laughs> I meant to say red my bad so now we've got our emissive, which is red, but I can just change it to blue. More friendly color, I think. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our different post-processing effects. And what we can also do, I mean, usually I like to add or, or combine everything with Bloom because I think Bloom just makes everything look a lot better. So if you go back to your dot effects, do this, you see you still got your dot effects but it's got this nice Bloom to it. Um, similar, same thing could be done with the Sobel effect. So I will just uncomment these and see what the Bloom effect does. See. I just think it just makes it look a whole lot better. If you remember the last time, it was looking very, well, it was not prominent. Let me just put it that way. I can also add some color to it. Okay, so that will color everything. Okay, so there we go. So in a nutshell, yeah, this is what our post-processing effects do. And so in the next lesson, then I'm gonna show you how to use, or how to set up the highlight selected object effect it's a little bit different but same thing same process so yeah with all that said and done uh, i think i'm just going to end it right there and say yeah love and peace so till the next one i'm out